What a crazy day in the crypto market. One of crypto's biggest and most trusted stablecoins, USDC, is currently depegging right in front of our eyes, going from what was a pretty stable $1 peg for many, many years all the way down to 93 to 94 cents on some exchanges. And it is now hovering around the 95 to 96 cent mark. It's absolutely insane. And in today's show, I want to explain to you guys exactly what is actually going on, what was the reason for this DPEG, then have a talk about what my personal plan is. So, um, you know, what trades I'm taking in relation to USDC, and then also talk about its potential downstream effects on the rest of the market. Because I don't think this is just an isolated USDC incident. I think it has many downstream effects across um, multiple crypto exchanges and most notably DeFi protocols, which have high exposure to USDC. We've already seen things like um, DAI, things like Frax already drop from their pegs due to their USDC exposure. And I think it also has uh, like a large effect on money markets, which has downstream effects on crypto. So this isn't the way I wanted to spend my Saturday making um, a, a stream about like a really, really big stablecoin collapse. But uh, I guess it's very needed right now. It's actually at the gym and like doing a set and I was checking my phone in between sets. I know some people will hate me for that, but I was checking my phone and then I saw uh, all this stuff start to go down. I'm like, oh my God, I have to go on stream. I have to cover this live because there's just so much breaking. And at the end of the show, we'll go through the, like, the latest tweets and news because news is coming out constantly about this. Like every 20 minutes, we're getting new tweets, new takes, new opinions. Circle gave an update to give um, more clarity around the amount that was actually in their reserves, um, which shocked a lot of the market and resulted in um, even more negative price action for USDC. So it's pretty insane. But basically, I'm here for you guys. I'm here to give you an update, give you my opinion. And also, uh, we can talk through together at the end um, in a Q&A style, you know, how I think this could affect the market and, and you know, answer some of your questions and look at some of the latest data that's coming out. So without further ado, let's get into the reason why USDC uh, first collapsed or, or at least lost its peg uh, from a dollar down to around 95 cents. So what happened was um, Circle came out and did a tweet. They said Silicon Valley Bank is one of the six banking partners Circle uses for managing the 25% portion of USDC reserves held in cash. While we await clarity on how the FDIC receivership of SVB will impact its depositors, Circle and USDC continue to operate normally. So we all know what's happened with Silicon Valley Bank. It's the second biggest banking collapse in US history. That has gone down over the last couple of days. And we didn't quite know to what extent um, like crypto companies had exposure to Silicon Valley Bank, but Circle came out and confirmed that they did have exposure um, to Silicon Valley Bank. So what they said here is that 25% of their USDC reserves are managed by a variety of banks. So not just us at SVB, but also five other banking partners, one of which is actually Silvergate, which um, in its own right isn't good, but they do have many other partners. So like the risk is spread out and also it's only a 25% portion of their USDC. It's not like the entirety is, is held in Silicon Valley Bank or even these banks in general. So then, I mean, if you run the estimates on that, you can divide 25 by six, get like a rough number of like 4.2. Um, and then, you know, we can determine, okay, 4.2% uh, of the USDC supply is likely in um, the Silicon Valley Bank, uh, which is currently like not necessarily lost, but at least being uh, locked or unable to transact in the mean term. But what we actually saw um, was Circle come out and confirm the numbers and they were slightly higher than people expected. So instead of around that 4% level, um, which is like, you know, back of the, the, the napkin math on how much they might hold, we actually got confirmation that the Silicon Valley Bank holds $3.3 billion of the $40 billion total USDC reserves. So that is actually closer to 8% of the total amount of USDC held in reserves that are actually held or locked um, in the Silicon Valley Bank because they are going through proceedings at the moment, um, which could uh, be, you know, uh, very extended, very drawn out, and also could be bad for creditors, um, one of which one of the counterparties is now Circle, um, which could mean some of their funds could either be lost or um, at least like locked for the foreseeable future. So this obviously got a lot of people panicking um, and starting to sell USDC saying, well, if 8% is locked, then USDC is not actually worth a dollar. It's actually probably worth closer to 92 cents based on like very quick mathematical calculations. And the market um, has certainly been speculating on this. And that's the reason why we have had a massive um, decrease peg uh, in the price. But the problem here, I think, isn't just um, the, you know, the USDC that's potentially stuck in, uh, in the Silicon Valley Bank. I think it goes a little bit deeper than that because there is what we're kind of seeing now, potentially like a bank run scenario playing out where just panic is enough to instill um, fear in the market and that results in like a short-term bank run. And then like the, the, the actual effects of this 
uh, USDC situation become a lot worse than maybe what they were on a material basis to begin with. So I think that like the major risk right now for USDC is actually the risk that everyone just starts panicking, pulls their money out. We see a bank run situation, which makes things worse and maybe exposes more holes in USDC system um, than like we previously knew because really the only way to stress test a, a product like USDC is to go through something like this, go through a major DPEG, go through like a bank run type esque situation. And that's going to expose certain holes um, in the protocol. And, and I'll get into that in a minute. And also like some of the, the counterparties that could be affected by that. But that's like really where my concern is off the bat. Um, we did see the, uh, the USDC funding rates did start to like absolutely um, go crazy, meaning like to actually short USDC on a perpetual exchange like Bybit, you would need to be paying like 150% APR per year if you work out like the annualized figure, which means like shorts to actually be actively short, you are paying ridiculous amounts um, of funding rates to, to be net short because the demand for shorting USDC um, was so crazy high, especially at that 99, um, 98 cent level. A lot of people speculating on price movement. It actually pays right now to be long. So if you do want to take that long, and I'll get into whether I think that's a smart idea in a sec um, or, or whether it's a dumb idea, but if you did want to take that long and try and like arb the difference between like 95 to, to a dollar, then you're actually going to get paid. So it's pretty crazy. It just shows like um, the market is heavily favoring the short side right now, or at least there's a lot of open interest on the short side. So what actually happened uh, like roughly an hour ago now, and we're getting new news all the time, which I'll keep you guys updated on this stream. Uh, Coinbase said we're temporarily pausing USDC, USD conversions over the weekend while banks are closed. During periods of heightened activity, conversions rely on USD transfers from the banks that clear during normal banking hours. When banks open on Monday, we plan to recommence conversions. So it doesn't help um, that over the weekend, you can't actually uh, convert your USDC for USD. Now, that is the redemption mechanism that allows you to get real fiat US dollars back. So essentially, a lot of people are kind of like stuck in USDC if like you wanted an actual redemption. Now, of course, when redemptions reopen, that will allow people to redeem. And then like that discrepancy should start to even out. But for now, if you do want to redeem, um, technically you can't. So Samson did a tweet. He said, you can always redeem one USDC for a dollar, except when you can't. So that added like another um, like layer of fear into the market that, oh my God, like there could be like some sort of um, something brewing here, like a potential bank run when it, when it opens on, on, on the Monday. So we, so we see some data from the look on chain here. They said USDC depegged from 094. And in the past 24 hours, Coinbase deposited $2 billion USDC into Circle. Unknown Institution deposited $222 million to Circle. Jump Trading deposited a massive amount. And Falcon X also deposited deposited a massive um, amount here. So that's very interesting that we're starting to see deposits ramp up um, from other parties, obviously related uh, r related parties that are, you know, trying to, um, you know, redeem USDC uh, with with Circle. So Ted Talks Macro has an opinion here. He's and and I'll and I'm putting a few opinion pieces throughout this uh, show because essentially, like, there is no verdict, there is no um, black or white when it comes to something like this. All we can really do is speculate on the effects. So, of course, I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm also going to share opinions from other creators and, and people that are like in the space um and then at the end we can like come up with our own verdict essential on how we play this and what might actually happen but since it is so opinion based since we don't have all the data uh essentially like uh, i'm just going to be sharing opinions from other major creators as well um and just remember yeah smash the like button uh for this like emergency stream on the weekend once again don't usually stream on a saturday but like this is super big super important that you guys are up to date aware of what's happening especially if you have usdc exposure you ought to be aware of how your holdings could be affected not just usdc materially but also across the DeFi sector as well and and i see a lot of people now just waking up maybe from europe maybe it's 6 a.m 7 a.m and you're now seeing like on your phone like your usd holdings like depegging in front of you it's pretty crazy um when i woke up i couldn't believe it i was yeah as i said didn't even check twitter i was just at the gym literally checked my phone i was like holy shit usdc is like 95 cents it was unbelievable um and i'm not saying this necessarily is ust 2.0 because it's very different and we'll get into why it's different but this was like the first day in a long time where it felt like deja vu from that usd DPEG. Like just looking at um, a major stablecoin DPEGing in front of me, looking at all the fear on Twitter, I literally had like this crazy like deja vu feeling like I was back in May 2022 um, witnessing the USD DPEG all over again. Not really 
memories I want to like revisit. Um, this time though, I was lucky to uh, be on the flip side of things with not too much USDC exposure. Whereas UST, I had I had obviously UST um, in anchor, which I had to like you know really make tough decisions over at the time. So maybe I'm a bit luckier there. But I know a lot of you you guys probably have USDC and you're wondering what to do. You're wondering whether you should sell, whether you should buy, like what the play is. Um, and of course, like I'll, I'll give you my opinion on that um, in, in this show as well. So Ted talks macro says. Can never be sure in crypto, but it looks to be okay. 8.25%, as we established before, of Circle's reserves are stuck in the Silicon Valley Bank, leaving 91.75% of their funds currently liquid. Even in the case that funds are totally lost, Coinbase will step in um, to shore up USDC. Adam Cochran also evaluated the data that Circle came out and provided to us um, around the $3.3 billion exposure to SVB and said, okay, it's not so bad because the uh, SVB assets are still there, just illiquid, and the price gap spread across customers. This means a fraction of the 3.3% could be a loss given the 5% rate on short-term treasury circle can easily cover the delta. So there's a couple things to break down here. I think the first thing to break down is that they do have 3.3 billion that is currently stuck in SVB. It doesn't necessarily mean 3.3 billion is lost. It just means it's not accessible. So like the theory here is if like there was some bank run, they maybe don't have all of the um, funds like totally necessary to cover it in the short term because some are stuck. They may actually end up losing some. Um, and that would obviously mean USDC is worth slightly slightly less than a dollar. Like, I don't know what the net asset value would be, 95, um, 90, 97, 98. What I think would happen in that scenario is Coinbase would likely step in and actually provide some backing. We know they have a few billion dollars in the Coinbase treasury to underpin um, USDC in the event something like this happens. What I think that would result in is probably a decline in the Coinbase stock price. Uh, Coinbase would come, would maybe step in back USDC and maybe make up the difference there. Not an ideal scenario, but that is definitely something that can happen. Obviously, eventually they want to they want to get USDC back to peg, and there's measures that they can take to do so. He also said, given the five percent on short term treasury circle can easily um, cover the cover the delta, so that's like their ability to um, be able to like, cover the, the the price gap um, given the current like yields of of the treasuries that they have assets invested in, uh, because obviously Circle doesn't just keep its money in uh, USD uh, USD sitting in a bank. They spread it out across like treasuries. They spread it out across multiple banks, as we saw. Um, obviously, one of the counterparties is why this whole thing started, which is the Silicon Valley Bank. But they also have like funds spread, off, spread all across the place. Um, that's like the way they diversify. And that's the way they try and prevent um, a, a really like large scale event like this happening on an even larger scale. Um, I would say this is pretty large, but like, Imagine how much bigger it would be if 25% was stuck in the bank. Obviously, that's something they want to uh, avoid at all costs. So they're kind of the 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 opinion pieces that sway to the side of, okay, this is going to be fine. Um, USDC is going to get back to peg. It's not that bad. The market's overreacting, yada, yada, yada. There's also the counter argument to this. And this is the less likely but more bearish argument that I think you should be aware of that potentially the, the price of USDC is not capped in the short term so even though like you might be able to pin the the even if the funds are lost the nav of like usdc around 92 to 95 cents and that's kind of like your stop um that there actually could be a further bank run which then creates uh, a situation where circles kind of scrambling to get funds together to pay out these uh these withdrawals and in that case then usdc could have further downside because that would leave them with with slightly like less cash than what's optimal to actually pay out people that are trying to withdraw USDC. So this is like your bear case, and your bear case is uh, that they'll be forced to either halt withdrawals for an extended period of time. We already saw they stopped redemptions over the weekend, um, but like halt withdrawals for an extended period, and then also um, maybe sell bonds, sell treasuries to make up the difference, which they're going to be able to do. And obviously, you know, a lot of those treasuries are paying five percent plus. They can sell them uh, in order to underpin withdrawals. However, like that's probably something they don't want to do. And that's probably like a last resort um, because obviously that's not good for Coinbase or, or, or USDC. The reason I'm mentioning them together is because Coinbase obviously is very linked um, to USDC, which technically is issued by, by Circle. Probably actually one of the reasons why um, potentially USDC is facing scrutiny because of some, um, because of like, uh, I guess I mean, Big Boy did a tweet that probably summarized this better than me. He says, um, it's a stablecoin war. That's what this is all about. Up until today, Circle sat upon a lofty perch, feeling immune from contagion. Today, someone's finally taken a swing at Circle and USDC. I have a feeling I know who it is. We're literally witnessing a war in front of our very eyes. 
I don't want to make any claims because this is just an opinion and it's a bit of a conspiracy theory, but I think what he's alluding to here might be Binance because we know USDC like dobbed in um, BUSD, which resulted in, or at least that's the rumor, which resulted in the the um, sanction against Paxos. Maybe we're seeing like a, a kind of rebuttal here, like a counter move. Either that or this is part of Operation Choke Point, which is like the, the big crackdown on the on and off ramps and um, maybe that's like playing into things uh, a little bit, but that is a conspiracy theory. And I wanted to get into that later in the show because it's not really that important, but like it just um, came up, you know, in my mind. So let's answer the the first question Bef- before we start like going through DGen and speculating on like, if you can trade it, Arbit um, and, you know, what DeFi protocols may be a, a long or a short as a result of, of the USDC uh, DPEG. I guess the, the first question we have to answer is what would you do if you just held USDC. So let's say your material exposure is just USDC. You don't own these other protocols. Um, Yeah, like, yeah, you don't have any other exposure to DeFi and you just hold USDC. Do you swap it um, to USD and withdraw to your banks? Do you keep money in fiat? Do you swap to a major? So ETH BTC, take market risk of like BTC crashing, pumping, dumping, like we don't necessarily know. That could like offset the (laughs) the actual... um, uh, paper gains that you may have made by selling USDC in the first place? Do you simply hold USDC, wait for it to go back up to peg if you think that's going to happen? Uh, I, I, this is kind of like the questions you have to ask yourself as a USDC holder. For me, at, when I first started to see a DPEG, I decided, look, uh, I, I'm not going to take the risk. So when it was like 98, 99 cents, I shifted like any remaining USDC, which wasn't that much, out into USDT. And I also, um, you know, withdrew some of my USDT into, into fiat currency. So for me, that's Australian dollars. For you, that might be US dollars or um, like euros or depending on the country you're in. So I don't necessarily think it escalates into a full-blown DPEG uh, because Coinbase does still have a like a 40, um, or Circle, sorry, does have a, a $43 billion balance. So reserves to be able to underpin redemptions. Yes, some of that is now threatened by the fact they've got $3.3 billion locked. Uh, which obviously isn't great, uh, which is like current like around eight percent, but they do have like enough ammo here to be able to like defend the majority of the peg. So I don't think it escalates into like a full blown D peg right now from where I'm sitting, but I'm not also going to stick around to find out. Like, why would I take the risk, especially a bit earlier in the day when it was easier to make this decision around ninety eight to ninety nine cents? Why would I take the risk to try and make a one to two percent? Um, when I can just stay out of the market and then uh, and go into other stables or, or fiat currency. And if I do want to have long exposure, I can simply long and get paid to long on Bybit. So because longs are essentially being paid due to funding rates, it's actually probably like for many people, if you want to take that long, um, it does make sense to, to long on a perp and actually get paid to long versus holding spot USDC. So for me, the decision was really easy to go into USDT and get out of USDC because it's like, look, I'm going to get out. If I want to be a degen and try and gamble on this, I'll just gamble on perps and I'll get paid to do it. And I won't risk like my um, initial spot position. So I'm not in USDC anymore. Now, the, the price of USDC now has come down since I personally made that decision. So now like the decision becomes a lot more difficult. So if you're a viewer watching and you're in USDC, it, it, it is a more difficult position now. You've got the choice of like copying a 4% loss, um, 4 to 5% loss, depending on what price you get on, depending on the market you're trading on and like just accepting it and just like you're willing to pay 4% just to save your ass in case things get worse. You also have the decision to like stick by your initial position and wait for um, things to get back to peg because that's like still the likely scenario. We have to think probabilistically here it's only at 95 cents. It's not like UST where it like is a full blown collapse. There is reserves here to underpin USDC. So there's, there's enough of an argument to make that it would go back to a dollar to say that's probabilistically the scenario that's going to play out. Now it really depends on what percentage you want to put on it. Um, 90%, 95%, 85%, 99%. If if you're 99% sure, then it's probably worth the risk. If you're 80% sure, if you're not so sure and you're, and you do weight that bank run risk a little bit higher, then or, or, or you think maybe there's more stuff to be exposed in terms of like other counterparties, then maybe you do consider to jump out. I can't give you that like exact answer because it depends on how you view risk and it also depends how much of ex- of your exposure to USDC. For example, if you have 100% of your stables in USDC, then it would be stupid to gamble on your entire portfolio 
um, in, in one asset. That essentially means your entire portfolio is just gambling um, on on the peg on it going back to peg in the short term, which may actually not happen in, in the very short term. Over the long run, that becomes more likely, but over the short term, it doesn't mean it will happen. So if 100% of your portfolio is in, there's a stronger argument to take some out, cop a small loss and diversify a little bit just to protect yourself. If only 10% of your portfolio is in and you're willing to take the risk, then it may just be worth holding on for that um, and holding out for that 5%. Or you can take the other option, um, which is what I'm doing, which, and of course I got a slightly better exit than maybe some of you that are still holding USDC, but uh, nonetheless, um, taking your money out and like hedging uh, with like a spot, um, sorry, like a per position on, on the exchange like Bybit. That's maybe a little bit more degen, but I know it's something that uh, big traders are doing. Like Ashan, for example, said there's not much better risk reward right now than longing USDC below 95 cents. 3.3 bill with SVB is only 7 to 8%. Most centralized exchanges will have USDC perps. You'll get paid a massive uh, funding rate. So like that is also one argument to to potentially gamble on it and look i'm not saying you necessarily should but if you do want to do it um then there, there are exchanges that we are partnered with in the description uh where you we can actually trade those perps i think we got yeah bitget bybit should both have those perps uh bybit has the thirty thousand dollar bonus bitget has the eight thousand dollar sign up bonus so if you do want to open any trades or anything and once again i'm not saying you have to but if that is part of your plan um then you you can do that uh, on perp markets using like one of the links in the description, but that's yeah, definitely like an option, uh, one way to play it. Ted thinks that the difference between the USDC saga and FTX is that circle have the money. Well, 92% of it, whereas FTX did not. So there's that other argument that like they've lost 8% and, and they won't get it back. Once again, not necessarily true. They very well may end up getting it back, but at least it's locked for the short term. Uh, and that, I guess the current value of USDC is slightly less, but as I mentioned before, like there are backstops in place. There's the Coinbase backstop, as well as, I mean, the fact that it's very unlikely that 98% of like, or sorry, 92% of total holdings sell off and test that um, upper bound of of liquidity. Imagine trusting stable coins in 2023 over dollars in your bank account. It's actually a good point uh, that that you're making here. I really am now very like skewed towards fiat versus USDC holdings and USDT holdings. Now, of course, like there's many reasons why you'd be in stables over like fiat, like AUD or USD. Like one reason um, that, that you'd be in stables over fiat is like ease of access and trading. Like you can potentially like utilize money markets to like play around with DeFi and you can um, like stake it to earn yield if that's something you do. And, and there's reasons why you would want it on a MetaMask to like jump into opportunities. Um, so there's many reasons to hold stables. And I, do tend to hold stables because also like many um, pairs are only in stables. You can't trade like direct AUD into a lot of assets or USD into a lot of assets. So you're going to need stables if you're in crypto and trading regularly and DCAing and all that stuff. So there's definitely an argument to have some stables, but there's a large argument as well to have some fiat. And that I actually skew more in the 50% plus in Australian dollars world because there is more of a backstop um, when it comes to like holding fiat currency, depending on the country you're in, like Australia typically bails out the banks. Like 2008 financial crisis, complete bailout, probably going to bail them out again in the future. Maybe things are slightly different in the US, but I feel like pretty, I feel more comfortable in an Australian bank than I do in a lot of stable coins in a wallet, which there's two risks there. There's wallet exploitation risk, um, which is low if you have like preventative measures like I do, but still there is that risk. And then like you also have the risk of a potential DPEG. So for me, like in terms of a risk reward play, cash actually does make more sense. But I also ne- know I need to have stables in the ecosystem to do DeFi things with, to have it available for trading, to interact with DeFi. So that's why I have like, I don't know, maybe 20, 30, 40% in stables. Of those stables, now it's basically all in USDT. So I'm kind of out of USDC for the time being. I just think w- when there's smoke, there's often firing crypto and it's oftentimes just not worth taking that like two to 3%. Um, it's not worth risking y- your entire cash position for a two to 3% upside when you, there's, there's potentially more downside. So that's pretty much why I'm not in USDC anymore. I'm mostly in USDT because I just don't, I mean, I just, I'm kind of going risk averse. I don't want to have headaches. I don't want to go to bed tonight and worry about my stable coins going to zero. I don't want to like have sleepless nights or be out with friends and worry about it. Like, I just don't need that worry. So that's why I'd, I'm in USDT. And if I want exposure to that, um, like, I guess, quote unquote, ARB, 
then I'll just long on Bybit. Like it's that simple, really. I'd much rather just long on perps and then keep my um my spot uh, exposure like to a to a minimum. And there's also a lot to talk about in the show about the effects on DeFi, which we're going to get into in a second. Someone said how to keep your wallet safe. There's a few things that you can do to keep your wallet safe. I won't make this like a risk management video, but um, having a good seed phrase solutions. There's 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 many like great seed phrase solutions out there to help. I do think it's one of the biggest pain points in crypto. Um, uh, but like making sure you've got more of a foolproof plan than just keeping your seed phrase on a piece of paper. Um, is basically my first recommendation. And then also always use a VPN. Like whenever you're trading on DeFi, whenever you're transacting in crypto, even on a centralized exchange, it just makes sense um, to use a VPN. Of course, we also have links to a NordVPN um, in the description if you do want to use it. I think we have like a like a yeah 30 day back money back guarantee um, promotion as well as a 60% discount if you use the link. So it's there like, I think it's like their 11th birthday promotion right now. So if you are going to get a VPN, I think now's like a decent time. I'm sure most of you have them. If you don't, what are you doing? Um, make sure you, sure you have one. So there's a link in the description. I view $3 a month as a way to protect like your entire, um, like your entire digital livelihood as a pretty good investment. Like, especially if you're managing th thousands of dollars, even hundreds of dollars, you can do like the percentage calculations on when it becomes worth it. But for most people, $3 a month to protect your identity is like really a no-brainer. Um, and you don't need to use my link. I'm not trying to shill links. You can use anything. There's other VPNs out there. I'm just giving you like a decent deal if you do want to use Nord. But just make sure either way, irrespective of what link you use, that you actually have a VPN. Okay, let's get into... Someone said USDC 86 cents. Is this true? No, it's not true. At least on Bybit. So there's many markets for this. And this is the, this is actually the thing right now. There's a huge discrepancy between the valuation on different markets. So we can even see here, Binance US has it at 97 cents. Bybit has it at 95 cents. Um, and if we go like USDC, USDT on, let's say, KuCoin, KuCoin has it at 94 cents. So there's huge discrepancies. And actually, this is like a, a, a market that you can actively ARB if you're very experienced. I'm not like an experienced arbitrager. I'm not doing it. But there are, I know a lot of people that I've seen on my Twitter feed that are actually actively arbing. So if you're really into that and you're really technical, you can probably sit here all day and look for opportunities. There was also massive opportunities for Bitcoin because Bitcoin was reacting differently on different exchanges. Like we can even see here, um, we have Coinbase Bitcoin trading at a premium and was trading at an extreme premium of 21K versus the markets on Binance, which were trading at 20.6. So there was a huge difference there. Uh, and the reason for that is because a lot of people were uh, flighting or running away from USDC, which created a Bitcoin premium on Coinbase. Because if you had your money in Coinbase in USDC, you were like, instead of looking for another stable, one of the options was just to go straight into Bitcoin. And a lot of people went into Bitcoin, which caused a premium on Coinbase, which actually caused Bitcoin to rally on other exchanges because Coinbase, I guess, um, acted as like the price discovery exchange. And then a lot of people started... Uh, essentially like buying on, on other exchanges and then that pumped Bitcoin across like Binance and other exchanges as well. So there was also a massive negative um, negative funding on, on perps. So there was a premium as well uh, to actually, you know, be in a position. So a lot of people said, oh, Bitcoin was short squeezing, but it actually wasn't a short squeeze. That's not what happened. It was largely the fact that people were flying out of USDC into Bitcoin. And that's why Bitcoin is actually up today which is pretty crazy because you'd actually think like, oh, Bitcoin's obviously going to crash when there's a major stable coin going down. Huge systemic risk. No, we're actually seeing Bitcoin be the safety asset today, which is a super um, you know, interesting thing that people are actually choosing Bitcoin over other stables. And even Ethereum also has performed quite well being the second largest crypto. That's been where a lot of people have been um, you know, flocking to. So this is quite interesting and it kind of makes me think on a broader scale and this is like a bit far-fetched, but at least I, I want to make this point on, on a broader scale. If something happened to US dollars one day uh, and we did see like a wide scale banking collapse, could that be the catalyst for Bitcoin um, as a safety asset? Like we're seeing right now on a much smaller scale, but on a bigger scale with a US dollar collapse, would people maybe flock into, in, into Bitcoin? It's like a question we got to ask ourselves. I think Eventually, that is one of Bitcoin's strongest narratives. And it's not a narrative now. And obviously, there's many headwinds for Bitcoin um, macro-wise with you know CPI data on Tuesday, as well as all of this like uh, Operation Choke Point stuff. Uh, massive headwinds for Bitcoin, obviously. But long-term, uh, do some of those headwinds actually become tailwinds as 
people kind of need places to park their money. That's where I think eventually the narrative for Bitcoin is. It's digital gold that can like be relatively resistant to um, US dollar volatility or US dollar depreciation actually benefits from depreciation. But I do think that's going to take a while to play out. But that's why Bitcoin like is is invented in the first place, I guess. And that's that's why I still truly believe in Bitcoin. And I believe in Ethereum and Bitcoin for different reasons. I believe in Ethereum because I believed I I believe in um the sheer dev power behind ETH. I also believe in what the what the Ethereum Foundation is doing in terms of their roadmap to create what is eventually a scalable network that can that can and obviously it's not as good as other networks, but that can host the amount of users that. It needs to host. It's already exhibited network effect to suggest that it can grow exponentially. And Ethereum's got something Bitcoin doesn't has. Ethereum doesn't have. Ethereum has um, genuine network effect because you have transactions happening on chain. You have wallets interacting with each other. You have also like the developer component. New dApps bring in new users. New users create transactions. That then creates network effect. That's how it works. Bitcoin doesn't have that, at least to not the same extent because like... If you're you're not really using Bitcoin as a payments network at the moment, that's not really how it's viewed. It's more viewed as like a store of value, um, and that it's not even a very good store of value. It's more viewed as a risk asset, like that could maybe one day be a digital gold. That's kind of how it's viewed, right? Um, so you, you, they're kind of very different propositions. I don't think you invest in Bitcoin for network effect, whereas maybe you do with, with Ethereum, and that that gives you that extra upside. So, okay, let's get into one of one of the major topics I wanted to talk about today. And that is USDC's uh, DPEG impact on the DeFi market. And we actually see the peg starting to shoot up here, which is quite interesting. And we're going to keep our eye on this throughout the remainder of the show. So I think, okay, so we've kind of established that it's probably not a doomsday scenario for USDC like it was for UST. Yes, there's going to be volatility. Yes, um, if, it, if there is a bank run, it can go under what we would perceive to be NAV. But overall, it's very unlikely that USDC collapses, given that there that there is enough backing from Circle at least to cover the majority, and there's also like Coinbase support as well. So there's probably enough there to suggest it's not going to be like a total crazy collapse. But unfortunately, I have to make you aware of another risk, and that is the risk it has on DeFi, because uh, unfortunately, although USDC may not be the one that collapses. There are DeFi protocols which have exposure to USDC um, that could be potentially impacted by this. Galois Capital did a good tweet, basically one sentence, a question. Are we about to find out which DeFi protocols hard-coded USDC at $1? I think the answer is yes. I think we are going to see um, some money markets start to be impacted. We're going to see some protocols that have like very precarious over-leveraged mechanisms start to be impacted. Individuals, that were executing very risky borrowing strategies, like um, kind of loops, borrowing loops, they're going to be exposed and they likely have already been liquidated. Ones that were leveraging against USDC, kind of like DGEN box strategies, they'll be exposed. So I think a lot of DeFi protocols can be caught out by this. Now, if you're a DeFi protocol and you get caught out, or if you're an individual and you get caught out, I think that's your fault. I don't necessarily view it as like a, a hugely terrible thing for, for the space. Because if you coded purely based on the assumption that USDC is always going to remain a, a dollar, like you just incorporated a massive uh, systemic risk into your protocol at the underlying protocol level, which is obviously just pretty stupid. So maybe some of them deserve what's coming, but I don't mean to say that in like a negative way. I, I just mean to say that in a way that like we're trying to weed out the, um, we're trying to weed out the weak here. And, and, I, and this is exactly what the bear market's done. That's what Luna did. That's what FTX did. That's what, um, obviously, like the centralized lenders that went down, BlockFi, Voyager. I mean, all of those going down showed us the mechanisms that don't work and the mechanisms that do work. So there is going to be DeFi protocols here that are affected. If we go on to the 24-hour chart and look at the projects that are reacting the worst, there are obviously some like DeFi-related protocols in here. But what we're seeing is actually the um, protocols that have stable coins that are backed by USDC, they're the ones that are suffering the most. So Fraxshare, Maker, two of the worst performers because they have underlying exposure to USDC. And I'll explain why. DAI, for example, if you look at how DAI is composed, and I've got the backing chart up here, DAI is actually composed of um, a large part USDC collateral. So we can see here this blue 
column on the chart is the collateral that makes up DAI. And USDC is one of the primary assets alongside Ethereum, which actually makes up DAI's market cap. And this is one of the problems I've had and I've stated with DAI in the past that it's not really a fully decentralized stablecoin. And we probably do need like a proper out and out decentralized stablecoin solution because DAI isn't it. It's essentially leveraging off a centralized stablecoin. And when an event like this happens, I mean, DAI suffers, even though it's decentralized, it's not really. So DAI also had a massive DPEG. Um, this is roughly trading in response to USDC. So what I've seen from DAI is the price performance has been very similar with USDC, probably just on a slightly lagging basis. Even though it shouldn't be the case, DAI theoretically should hold up more because it's US USDC isn't the only thing backing. It also has ETH and other assets. So theoretically, DAI shouldn't actually be lower than USDC, but it is because the market is just going risk off with all these DeFi projects. And it's saying like, we just don't want to be in DAI. Same thing's happening for Frax. A lot of the market's saying, we just don't want to be in Frax. And um, we actually also saw the um, three pool, which is the major curve liquidity pool for uh, USDT, USDC, and DAI. That also started to um, you know, skew. That also started to reposition itself. So anyone invested in the curve pool likely suffered, uh, suffered a shit ton of impermanent loss. So we are seeing like the DeFi effects start to kick in. Now, Frax is partly backed by USDC as well. So it's packed, It's actually backed more by Ethereum than it is by USDC. And it is technically over collateralized, but it's over collateralized now partly with a stable coin that's being depegged. So there is a lot of risks surrounding Frax and that's why Frax share actually dropped. Kind of sucks because I really like Frax and I hold some Frax because I, it is part of the LSD narrative. In fact, if you are going to speculate on any recovery here, like if, if you're taking that, um, perp long on USDC, then you might want to consider if you're a DGEN, like a Frax long. Um, obviously, low leverage, very easy to get stopped out. I wouldn't recommend high leverage, but you could probably take like a Frax, an FXS long because it has exposure to LSD as well. Uh, as like, uh, I think it's like 2% now, I think of the total ETH derivative supply, maybe like 1.5%, but it's been growing significantly and it is underneath like the lighter rocker pool umbrella. Obviously, the general market would need to hold up for it to perform, but given the fact Frax shares sold off a lot, that could be one that you look at. I haven't really done the math on it yet. I'm kind of just thinking off the top of my head, but that might be something I look at. Um, if I do want to take that USDC long, it could be like another way to get indirect exposure, but maybe potentially more upside. But the market is generally going risk off when it comes to these uh, stable coins. So obviously, DAI, Frax, the ones with USDC backing. It's pretty crazy if you go onto the uh, coin... Gecko or coin market cap charts and have a look at stable coins. We're seeing a lot of stable coins now are starting to depeg, not just USDC. Like if we look at the um, current value, this is total market cap. How do I get to dollar value? Uh, stable coins. I don't know how I get to, how I switch the dollar value, but anyway, we're seeing a lot of. Uh, I'll go, I'll just go into the Coin Gecko homepage to show you. We're seeing a lot of the big stable coins starting to depeg. Like look at this. So obviously, you know, FXS. Um, so DAI is not uh, one of the biggest ones, minus 5.6. Obviously, FRAX, 5.2. USDD as well, 4. But that's always been kind of shaky and always had like a loose peg. Uh, USDP as well, PAX dollar. That also makes up some DAI. That dropped. Probably explains why DAI also is is receiving like the brunt of the sell-off. Um, what, what other ones are we seeing as well? Gemini dollar, CUSDC, which is a USDC derivative. So we're seeing a lot of these stable coins now starting to get sold off. Mars is in the future. Imagine what the US will do. Um, not sure. What, what does that mean exactly? Are you talking about choke point? Because I think choke point is like pretty real. This looks surreal to me seeing the stables move like this. Yeah, stables are trading like shit coins. W would you have believed me when I told you yesterday that if you went onto CoinGecko, sorted by 24 hour performance, um, like in terms of the worst performers, and looked at the top 10, that like five of them would be stable coins or stable coin like related protocols. Like that's absolutely insane. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of the knock-on effects. Like even if USDC gets back to peg, yes, a lot of these stables go to peg, but are there DeFi protocols that um, are like over leveraged um, or are there strategies that are like looping USDC and people get exposed like on Aave or other money markets on more degen chains? That could be something to look at. So just really what I would urge is you to keep your eye on the DeFi space and how things evolved. Keep your eye on DeFi Llama for tracking TVL inflows, outflows, because that's going to be super important to see how the market starts uh, reacting. So all of this 
kind of ties into something that's going on, and I'm doing a video tomorrow on this, but all of this USDC stuff, whether it is just like a um, an unfortunate series of events related to Silicon Bank, or whether there's what BitBoy is saying here, something deeper at play, it's undeniable that like there is a war on crypto. Uh, and once again, the war may not specifically apply to USDC, but Operation Chokepoint is real. Pretty scary. Actually, if, if, if you want to not sleep tonight, I don't know who, why any of you would not want to sleep, but if you don't want to sleep tonight and you want to stay up, read this article. It's by Nick Carter. It's about Op- Operation Chokepoint 2.0. Basically scared me to death when I read it because it just went through um, the, the fight on crypto that we're seeing from the Biden administration and the SEC and like to basically all the US government related parties are kind of attacking crypto in in, in their own unique ways. Started with like Signature, uh, then they denied Custodia a license to essentially become a member of the Federal Reserve System. Then we saw like the Economic Council release a statement which discouraged banks from transacting with crypto assets. We saw the DOJ fraud unit announce an investigation into Silvergate. We saw Binance suspending USD withdrawals. Basically what we're seeing and this is what Operation Chokepoint is at its core, is the government, instead of banning crypto and going, let's just flat out ban it, which would cause you know political, social uproar, instead they're targeting the on and off ramps. So instead of going for crypto at its core and saying, we're banning Bitcoin, they're not doing that. They're actually going for the approach of trying to starve liquidity in the ecosystem. So you can stop the on ramps and off ramps via banking, You can sanction certain assets which you view as a security and like clamp down on staking. You can also implement taxes like a Bitcoin mining tax and a capital gains tax, which obviously affects crypto and affects people's willingness to invest in crypto. And eventually eventually you make it really difficult for people to invest and it kind of stifles the sector without having to ban it, but you can stifle it. That is currently what we're seeing. And once again, don't necessarily know how relevant it is to USDC, but it kind of is all part of this bigger picture of what is happening in the US right now. I have a full video on this coming out in around 10 hours from now, 10 to 12 hours, which is going to cover Operation Chokepoint, what's happening, give you guys a full update. I think it's something you need to be aware of, and it's crypto's biggest headwind. Now, crypto with or without the US is going to survive. You can't kill innovation. I think the US is making a big mistake, and I think likely in five years' time, we're going to look back on this, and and we're going to say, wow, like the US made a huge mistake. Um, And there will be countries that benefit from it. The UAE is set to benefit. They're really accepting of crypto. Some of the Asian countries now, especially like even with Hong Kong becoming more accepting, they might benefit. Um, Other countries, I'm not exactly sure what Australia is doing, but there's been negatives and positives about our token mapping plan. But if they don't go down the US's path, they could be a beneficiary. Some of the European countries as well. Crypto has to go somewhere and there will be countries that make up for the US's shortfalls. But it's, I guess not good when you have the biggest nation in terms of active investment into crypto and active development into crypto trying to actively stifle it. So once again, video out out on that in 10 hours, but Operation Choke Point is probably the biggest crypto headwind alongside macro this year. Um, That's probably the biggest thing like as crypto investors that we're currently facing. Someone said USDT is at 97 cents. I just don't think that's the case. Or is it the case? Um... Let's let's see. Uh, let, let's actually see. So USD, US... No, it's at 99.3. Hold on. 99.3. Uh, let's try and get another exchange. USDC, USD. USDT, USD. Sorry, on Binance and Coinbase. No, it's still a dollar. Still a dollar, bro. It's just FUD. Um, US, look, USDT has its own issues. The fact it's kind of like a lot of it's offshore. We don't have full clarity over its reserves. It seems like Tether's been the number one thing that's fudded every single month, basically. There's some new story about Tether. So far, it's held up. I hope it continues to do so because if Tether goes down, I tell you what, it'll be be much worse than USDC considering it's the biggest. Uh, But we actually saw people flocking into Tether. So the market just, it's like, stuff this, like we're getting out of USDC. Let's go into Tether. And that resulted in like the Tether price actually at least in the short term, pumping. And you're going to see on most exchanges, it's actually above peg slightly. Yeah, so Martin just said on some exchanges, it's 1.06. So no, it hasn't de-pegged, but it's weird because there's a discrepancy between exchanges. Like look at KuCoin now, USDC is trading at 
uh, 94 cents and then you've got it at 97.9 on Binance and 95 on Bybit. So there is a discrepancy here based on a few things. One, the funding rates on different like perp markets um, and two, the the amount of like liquidity and volume going into each individual exchange is going to impact price. I expect this to even out, but due to the sheer volatility of the market right now with a lot of sells, a lot of buys, a lot of speculating short to the short side and to the long side, we're just seeing like crazy price fluctuations. So if you are trading this, then you you just have to be careful, like set a limit order, um, be like reasonable. Don't use crazy leverage. You don't want to be speculating when price action is this choppy and you're going to be able to see it even better on like the 30 minute time frame, just like how choppy this uh, DPEG actually is. People are nutty now. Imagine what happens when the rest of the market wakes up tomorrow morning. Yeah, basically the US is copying this during their night. What happens when, um, like, yeah, Europe's going to start waking up, seeing what's going down. They, they might have a little bit of a freak out. There is more to come from this saga. This isn't it. There's a lot more to come. I, I expect Coinbase to make a statement very soon, as well as Circle. Uh, I expect a lot more information to come out. I'm just going to scroll through Twitter here and see if anything's broken since I started streaming because there could be a lot of stuff that comes out. Thought is USCC. Thought is that USCC will repay its collateral is still solvent, yield bearing products. Potentially, except it's, I guess, even if it's solvent, it's still locked. Uh, it's still not accessible. Is there a protocol where I can bet on USDC with ridiculous leverage? Yeah, you can use an exchange. If you want to short, though, you're going to be paying to short through funding. If you want to long, then you can obviously long and get paid. Um, yeah, we're just seeing a lot of people waking up and starting to notice what's actually going on. Uh, remember when they were worried about Shanghai? Yeah, the worries went from ETH to USDC real quick. We're awake in California. Yeah, you, you should should be still be awake in the US. It's what, like... Um, what time is it? Like 12 a.m.? Depending on what, actually, if you're on West or East Coast. Obviously, West Coast, you'll still be up. Dai might be even... So, Sean, he's a bit of a degen. He actually... Sean's the guy that um, shorted FTT. So, he he likes playing this stuff. He's actually a really smart guy. Friend of mine as well. So, I respect his opinion. Um, let's see what he has to say here. He says, Dai might be a better risk reward than USDC since it's only 30% comprised. It does have PUSD exposure, but that's only... 97 cents. Also looking at X USDC LPs that show value of people dumped USDC for another asset. So like playing like the impermanent loss ARB, but to your benefit. So getting into pools that are providing value relative to like the underlying asset value. If USDC gets back to peg, you're going to make more of that asset. So that's also an interesting play, actually. Um, the LP play, something I didn't think of uh, initially, but that that is very, very interesting. X equals anything that's been pumping. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Dai could let's see how Dai's performing. Let's actually get some Dai um IUSDT. Let's see how Dai is responding. Uh let's go OKX. 94. Wow. Crazy. Gemini 93. Yeah, it's crazy because if we look at Dai's composition. If we look at Dai's composition, um, at least last time I checked, it, it was only like 30% USDC. Let's actually check the current backing. Does Gemini have up-to-date backing? Uh, does anyone know where I can get the current DAI backing? DAI backing percentage. I don't know what website it's on. It might be on their website somewhere. Here we go. So, DAI collateralization. Uh, over-collateralized, of course. USDC, 2.7 bill. Ethereum, 600 mil. 500 million RWA, I don't know what that is. GUSD 462, DAI USDC LP 399. Then you've got. Okay, and then that's the adjusted value. So this is the minted from collateral value, and this is the locked by vault value. So 8.2 bill locked, 152%. Yeah, I mean, to me, it looks like. To me, it looks like this could be a decent play, the ARB with DAI. I wouldn't go in with crazy size though, because this is like risky. Uh, uh, to be honest, I'm enjoying sticking on the sidelines and not enjoying, but I'm more comfortable sticking on the sidelines and just watching. But if I'm going to take a trade, it's not to short dial USDC. It's actually to probably long, uh, to probably long dial USDC just based on my, my own probability. And probably as Ashan said, die actually probably is the better long. 
Yeah, unfortunately, Martin Dye's always been backed by USDC, which is one of the issues the market and I have had with it, that it's not really fully decentralized. Should we swap USDC now? At the start of the video, I kind of explained um, my thought process behind that. The TLDR is it's very difficult to make that uh, assumption because I don't know how your portfolio is comprised. I would say the more percentage weighted you are to USDC, the more you'd want to consider diversifying even at a loss just to be safe. But in general, if you're only holding a small amount of USDC, then you can play um, the game of just waiting for it to recover. It really depends on your risk profile. So for me, I sold out. I didn't want to take any risk. Sold out at 98 cents. Got it slightly before that next leg down. If you can sell out at 98 cents, it also might not be a shit decision. Like I know Binance has a market that's showing 97 cents. If you can genuinely get 97 to 98 cents, then take it, obviously. Um, Well, not financial advice, depending on your situation, but I would personally take it Um, because I I mean, it's like a fraction, like a couple percent. Sure. I'll give up like one and a half percent um, to like be able to sleep tonight, basically, especially if you're in the US and, and it's bedtime and you're in like 90% USDC. I mean, you're not going to be comfortable sleeping knowing that like this wick can, yeah, go back down to like 90 cents. That's pretty scary. But I, I don't think this is USDT. I don't think this is UST, sorry. I don't think it's a death spiral. We have to make the distinction here between an asset that is facing um, a lot of uncertainty but has backing versus an asset that didn't actually have backing and mostly relied on sentiment. So I agree, UST sentiment was shit, and so is the sentiment for USDC right now. I agree. But the underlying mechanisms are very different. The difference is Circle has a treasury. It has reserves. Can it access all of them? Maybe not right now. 3.3 bill locked in, in the Silicon Valley Bank. But at least it has something, right? Or at least the majority backed. UST didn't, and that's why it's not a death spiral. Because you're going to be able to redeem... Um, every USDC has an underlying value. So when redemptions open, and I know they're currently paused, but when they do open, um, y- you're likely going to be able to, to swap. The only thing is, I guess, the speculation that like there's a bank run. But yeah, that's all speculation and it may not actually end up playing out. Treasury, you say, so did UST. Yeah, but UST, I mean, it didn't have a treasury. It had a Bitcoin treasury of what? 10 bill? It had a bit, but that's not that's not backing. Uh, having a treasury that's used to defend a peg, which can be like exhausted, is not backing. Whereas this is actually backed, like actually in a reserve bank, like being backed. Um, of course, it's a mix of cash. This is the cash component, uh, in in, in like the dark color here. This is the cash component uh, spread across six reserve banks, and then you've got the rest in uh, a treasury's portfolio a short dated treasuries portfolio, which they can redeem. How can we swap? I mean, you've got a few options. So like if you're on a DEX, you can try and like, depending on what chain you're on, you could use like an aggregator like Kyber swap. That's going to like find you the best rate. So if you're in, if you're in DeFi, you can try and uh, go like USDC to UST, not giving you a great rate on ETH. So you might want to play around. You might want to see like what it is in Arbitrum. So USDT. So that's one of your options, like look through different um, chains and, and see what markets have the best rate. Charts unavailable in Arbitrum right now, but you're going to get uh, 1.04. Showing that you're going to get one-to-one there. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Let's try it on Polygon. But yeah, just have a, have a shop around if you do want to get out on different... Uh, if you're on a DEX, of course, have a shop around, see what you can get. saying like 94 cents. Oh, yeah, I think it's like 94 cents optimism. Yeah, just have a play around depending on what chain you're on. See what you can get on KyberSwap. Uh, that's like if you want to do it on a DEX. Obviously, you, you do have centralized exchanges. So like uh, Binance, Bybit, BitGet, OKX. There's a link in the descriptions, by the way, to any like exchange if you want to sign up bonus to get involved. I think OKX has a $10,000 mystery box right now. If you sign up and um, deposit $50, that's pretty good. So you can use a centralized exchange. There's many places you can swap. Depends where your USDC is. Someone said they just longed on, on just long USDC on Bybit. Yeah. I mean, on Bybit, it's 99. So on perps, so USDC perp contracts, it's nine, four, five, three. 
So if it did get back to a dollar, that's 6%. Problem is more leverage you use, the more chance of getting stopped out you have. It's like you'd want to have your stop somewhere in the 80 cent range. I mean, at least you wouldn't want to have it at like 92 cents. You might get stopped. But yeah, that's a decent, like, I don't think it's a terrible play, but it's obviously not like a, like a high conviction play. Like you don't go in with size into a, into a little arb. You, 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 and it's not really a true arb either. It's more speculating that it is an arbitrage because there's no, no um, redeeming like dollar uh, exchange right now, at least not until Coinbase opens. So there were draws. Someone said too risky, 100%. For a lot of people, this is too risky. This is degen. Like, Ishan's a degen. Like, he's a degen. I'm a bit of a degen, so that's why I might do it. But uh, I'll have to decide after the stream whether I do it. But it's definitely an option. And die is definitely an option as well uh, to do the same thing with. But to, to, Because you are actually being paid to be long. I think a lot of people, when they trade, ignore funding rates. But if you try and short this, you're paying crazy amounts to be short. You can't hold it for any significant amount of time. You'll just get wrecked. So... Being paid to be long on a DPEG isn't terrible. Mike, check the MACD. I actually do, speaking of MACD, that just reminded me to check Bitcoin and how Bitcoin's responding. So where is my good Bitcoin chart? This is my chart. So yeah, Bitcoin, actually decent price action, to be honest. Obviously terrible <laughs> on a... um on a smaller time frame, I say decent because we didn't actually smash through the 200 MA on the daily. This is like my indicator to be bullish or, or bearish um, on like a higher time frame. Decent that we got a bounce there, but we did break mid range. So eventually we are going to come down and test this again. And if we break, then we're going to range lows, I think, which is 18 K I'm calling at least for now, this is deviation. Of course we can revisit those FTX lows, but that's deviation for me. So at the moment, I think like we just are in one big range. And I know I'm a bit of a broken record because I've been saying this and I mean, XO has been saying it and SC and all the traders have been saying it basically. But um, yeah, I, I do believe we're, we're currently range bound. We failed to break at range highs of 25K. Obviously we got rejected. And, and so until further notice, that's not on the cards. And you've also got range lows at 18 and then you've got deviation at 15A. So like a break below would mean FTX lows get revisited. If you hold at range lows, and that's a decent long. And I'm obviously very interested in an 18 to 18 to 18 to 19k or 18 to 185k like long zone, just as like 25k was uh, ended up being a very good short zone. So yeah, I think we're still in a range until further notice. In terms of like where we move within that range, we can look at the four hourly for a little bit more short time frame clarity. We bounced off 20k, which was positive, but still in general, this is bearish because likely what happens is we push up and then um you know test this again more times you test more chance you have of breaking right and then that would send us to range lows at 18 so for me price action suggests we we want to like the gravitational force here is is range low that's just my gut feel uh but i will keep monitoring this because yeah bitcoin right now extremely volatile extremely important to stay on have your finger on the pulse so i've just got my eye on this someone says Bit bitcoin usdc pair you want usdc pair Let's look on OKX. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin in its USDC pair is obviously worth more because USDC is dropping in value. Pretty crazy. Pretty damn crazy. Just bought 500 USDC in Gemini. I mean, you got balls. I, I, don't, I don't know if spot is like the best risk reward. Because if, like, let's say you put $500 in and you end up making that. I mean, let me get the exact amount on Gemini. USDC, Gemini. US, uh, USDC, USDT. Okay. So let's say it does get back to a dollar. You make, like, 3%. I mean, is it worth it for, like, you know, 20 bucks? I don't know. It's up to you if you want to make 20 bucks, but I don't know. That's sort of long I'm interested in taking. If I'm if I'm going to long, I'm going to long on perps and I'm going to be paid to long. And I'm going to use low leverage, but I'm, that's where I'd be long, to be honest with you. I just don't think it's, I just don't know if it's worth it. I, that's why I'm out of spot USDC. It's what I said at the start. I'm out. I'm watching this from the sidelines. Um, I just want to chill 
yeah, hopefully be able to have like a normal night's sleep tonight. Um, small margin, big leverage. You can, but you also can get wicked. So like, I would, I wouldn't feel comfortable having a stop above ninety cents. To be honest, I don't know, man. It seems the risk reward ain't there. Yeah, you've got to make your decisions by yourself. It's not a trade you need to take, and it's not a trade I would recommend that everyone takes. But you know, if that's if you do believe it's going to get back to peg, then that is the trade. Fucking degens. Yeah, I know it's crazy. So let's see if there's any breaking news quickly. Um, what I'm going to do is. There will be more news over the next 12 hours, right? I, because we're going to get more info from Circle. Coinbase is probably going to come out and say something. This is like really going to start. It's actually trending. Look at this. USDC is trending on on Twitter. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, there's much more information that's going to come into the market. So in like tomorrow morning, if new stuff bre breaks, I'm going to come on and give you an update. You can also stay up to date with me on Twitter because I'll keep you updated on Twitter if there's anything like really big um and yeah essentially like that's that's where where you can stay up to date just check if that link's live which it is yeah so if you want to stay up to date twitter and tomorrow i'll give you like a full show update and if there's anything crazy i'll do an emergency stream tonight like let's say it goes to 80 cents or um something nuts then i'll keep you updated i don't think that's happening tonight by the way i'm just saying i, I will keep you updated so I'm just seeing if there's any new information. I'm also going to check my research group. Uh, and let's see. Rand's awake on the group. I'm going to ask him anything to say to the viewers. I'm live. Let's see. Let's see what, um, let's see what Rand says. Let's see if I can get a quick response from him. Get his... They're all just waking up right now. I see Fred as well just woke up. So I message him in the group. Some, yeah, I'm also seeing some of my researchers saying they're not worried about USDC. I'm not worried. I'm not panicking. That's for sure. Um, if, if anything, I'm looking at long trades, but I'm also like risk averse enough to have gotten out of my spot. That's my personal takeaway. Now your takeaway may be different, but that's my personal um takeaway of this usdc situation i'm more worried about the impact on DeFi, and that's something we're just gonna have to monitor because we don't know what mechanisms break until they break that's the reality we, we we just don't so that's something we're just going to need to monitor and of course i'll keep you updated if something happens uh let's go through the research group i've got a research group with a lot of updates please Rand just said please can we make a thumbnail usdc collapse i think he wanted to go live i'm literally live right now I, i'm do you want Rand to join i'll ask him to join um too soon doing the research uh okay he's just woken up he's still researching um i told him i'm still live he's probably going to tune in and watch right now he said he's still researching um So let's just see if there's any new news breaking um, in the research group. Checking if there's anything new. Otherwise, I'll, I'll leave it here because I've basically said everything I think I need to say um, in the short term. Overall, not crazily panicking, but very cognizant of the fact there can be down downstream effects. Back across the board, witnessing a massive sell-off. Yeah, we're seeing this US banking collapse really come to a head. Um, people de-risking, I guess, like, there's nothing scarier in markets than the unknown. The unknown in markets is often what creates negative price action. So when you see like the second biggest bank in the US collapse, people are just going to take money off the table. And irrespective of whether there are underlying issues, you're going to see a sell-off. And the, the, the crazy thing is, and this is similar to bank run situations, is when you see, when general sell-offs like this happen, that actually creates or exposes underlying issues that maybe weren't there or maybe weren't pertinent. So bank runs create issues. Stock price dumps create uncertainty, which force issues as well. And that's also what played into Silicon Valley. Like when they did that, um, when they originally initially made their first statement and the, and the stock price plummeted, then that got a lot of people to pa panic and start to uh, like essentially cause a bank run. You're buying. What are you buying, bro? Crypto or usdc i'm not personally like crazy spot long crypto right now i'm pretty heavy in cash uh, i'm just waiting to see what happens i think there's a lot of headwinds right now which have me just cautious enough to not want to be like all in so i'm like roughly 50 percent cash um in terms of my crypto portfolio exposure so i'm not buying that dip yet heavily 
but USDC may be one, yeah. Someone said Polygon or Stacks. I mean, they're two totally different things. One's one's a, like an Ethereum L2 or like sidechain. Um, the other one is like a Bitcoin L2. So it's like ETH versus Bitcoin basically. But I just don't think uh, DeFi and Bitcoin will ever be huge or at least no nowhere near as huge as Ethereum. It's just not built for that. So I'd, I'd say I'd be much more cautious. Uh, but, but I think it's still an interesting trade. Yeah. Rand said he's still researching. So I think he might actually come on later and, and do a, do a show for you guys as well. Okay. Let's, let's just wrap, let's wrap up the USDC stuff. Let's, let's see what's happening across the market. So generally bleeding a little bit more. We've got it at 95 cents on Binance. We've got it at 94 cents on Bybit. We've got it at 93 cents on KuCoin. Can USDC survive? Yes. It's prob probabilistically it will, purely based on price and, its, and the reserves. The only thing that would like make things difficult is if something else was exposed, like some other thing was happening with their reserves. But since Coinbase is a obviously a US listed company on the stock exchange, has pretty thorough auditing. I would say it's unlikely that they would partner with Circle knowing that there was some huge Ponzi going on in the background. So I'm confident that their reserves are what they say they are and I'm confident they're being transparent. It's just what happened to that silver, um, not Silvergate, but uh, sorry, Silicon Valley bank money. They both start with an S. Um, that And both SI, so they're similar. Uh, yeah, it's what happens to that silver... Uh, I keep saying Silvergate. I still think of Silvergate. Silicon Valley money. Um, that is like the real question at the moment. Silvergate, Silicon Valley. Both start with SIL. It's like a bit of a tongue twister. Mental twister. USDC have no fund. It will fall. <laughs> I mean, bro, you, if you want to pay 160% APR to, to short on Bybit, be my guest. But um, I just don't know if it's worth it, to be honest. USDC is the next UST. Nope. Completely different completely different one was a um algorithmic stable with no backing i mean it had backing in the sense of like bitcoin reserves but that isn't buying buying on the market to, to underpin a peg versus having a treasury worth of assets to defend a peg is very different one's pure defense and the other one's like an ac actual backing that you can use to actually redeem for US dollars. So they're very different. You're short. You're short at 93 cents. Is risk reward to be short at 93 cents there? I mean, if funding was neutral, maybe, but funding's not neutral. That's the problem. I mean, let's see if there's an update on coin glass for USDC funding, but yeah, it's crazy, bro. You're paying like Ridiculous amounts. So you're paying 0.38% every eight hours. Or it's, oh, sorry, it's updating every eight hours. But that's like 150% annualized. Okay, well then you're printing if you got it at, 60, at 96 cents. Yeah, DAI, the reason, and for the people that missed the initial part of the video, the reason why DAI and these other decentralized stable coins are collapsing is because they're partly comprised of USDC. I think DAI is like roughly 30% USDC. So I think Ram wants to do maybe like a spaces or something today. He's definitely going to cover it for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, LMAO not worth. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. It's not worth it. It really isn't. It's really, it really, really isn't uh, in my opinion. But of course, it's opinion based. Like the how you trade is how you want to trade. I'm not going to laugh at you for for trading um, on a thesis. I'm just giving the information that I see and giving you my opinion. USDT or fiat. I, I covered this at the start of the show. I, I said what I'd do if I was holding USDC. And the reality is, for me, I, I am comfortable holding a large percentage of my available funds in fiat. I, I'm spread basically USDT and AUD and some USD. So I'm spread across three things. Australian dollars because I'm in Australia. Um, 
And yeah, depends what bank, if you trust your bank or not. I trust my bank. Depends if you trust yours, really. But uh, I'm spread across a, a few things. And I, I haven't lost trust in stables either. And for all intents and purposes, USDC re regains peg. So I haven't fully lost trust in, in stables. Um, I just think there are inherent risks there that warrant diversification. And for me, that's having some fiat exposure. And that's totally okay. There's this stupid mentality in crypto that like, oh, you have to be in stables because otherwise you're you, 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 everything's centralized, bro. You're in a centralized party, bro. It's like, this is just how society's built. I'm not like totally going to ignore the banking system because um, I like crypto. Like <laughs> I'm not going to take on unnecessary risk just because I agree with the merits of decentralization. No, I'm going to keep some in freaking fiat. Why wouldn't I? Let's play who can degen the biggest. Yeah, show us your size, guys. Uh, let, let me know what. Let me know what's going on. So Ted did a thread. He said, if you're looking to get up, caught up with the USDC DPEG, and you're not watching my show, here's a few tweets. Personal opinion: USDC DPEGed on on the news. Um, as a result of fear and panic, traders flock to USDT. Whole reaction is unwarranted. USDC is fully backed uh, by a reporting US entity on people comparing this to FTX. He thinks it's wrong because um, Circle actually has backing. Putting my money where my mouth is, I see this as a trade to repeg with minimal risk. So there you have DGen 10x leverage TED Talks Macro. They're leveraging up on Bybit. And look, you can do what you want with your own money. I'm just here to be the messenger that if you do want to trade on Bybit, we have uh, a link in the description for up to a $30,000 deposit bonus. So do what you want with that information. But if you are trading, um, we, we've got that uh, option for you guys in the description. But of course, like use damn risk management if you do. I wouldn't 10x either, to be honest. And I wouldn't cross my... I don't know what he's... Actually, no, I, I, can't, I can't hate him for cross margining because he may have a reason or no other open positions. But for me, I, I, I like to... Uh, leverage trade and isolate it because um, I don't want other positions being affected. But it does make, from a capital efficiency perspective, it makes sense if you're trading certain assets to have cross margin. So I won't judge him. I don't know what other positions he's in. But 10x, pretty aggressive. But I mean, he got a good entry. He's up. Um, he got an entry at 9479. Where could he get now, though? Could he get a better one now? He could. 9432. But then your actual order price. Your actual order price is different from the uh, the Oracle that's powering this price data on TradingView. So you need to look at the actual um, market price you can get. It's pretty damn crazy. Yeah, I don't necessarily know if he's down. I'm actually going to log into Bybit and I'm going to see for myself uh, how this looks. One sec. So trade. Uh, I can't be bothered doing... 2FA with my phone. So I'm just going to go into perps. Um, not logged in. And I'm going to show you. Because I, if I log in, I'm going to have to get my phone. Uh, USDC, USDT. Yeah, he would be down actually. Um, he would be down. Because he said he got in at 9479. And now it's 9424. So he'd be down actually. Probably freaking decent amount. He'd be down like... Um, he put in, did he just put in $20,000? Because it's 10x. Freaking hell. He's aped 20 grand into a 10x. Surely not. Surely like 18 grand into a 10x. Freaking hell, Ted. Ted, what are you doing, buddy? You're, you're aping. So yeah, on Bybit, uh, it's like 9423. Actually, it's much cheaper than Bybit. Yeah, no, this trading view is actually pretty accurate. I'll be honest. Like, look at this. Pretty accurate. Uh, cheaper on cheaper on Binance, but Binance is swinging like a freaking, like crazy. Yeah, the, the amount of open interest here is nuts. So we're getting crazy wicks. So just be careful. Don't trade with too high leverage or you'll get stopped. You'll get stopped. KuCoin as well. That's, I think this is the spot market. So perps market would be slightly different. 200k yeah that's total position so it's probably 20k on 10x but it's still crazy it's still a lot of money 
Fred asked a question in our research group. He said, what's the play if Tether loses peg running out of options? And, and he's 100% right. The issue with all these all the uncertainty around these stable coins is I think we just need more options. And, and we don't just need centralized options. We need trusted decentralized options because DAI and Frax, as much as like they operate well within the constraints of what they're trying to do, they're backed by USDC. So if you're backed by USDC, you're not fully, truly decentralized, are you? Like that's the major problem here. That's the major problem. So I think there's still a huge need and UST was that, but it was obviously conducted wrong with how the algorithm was operating. But there's a huge need for a truly decentralized stablecoin in this economy that isn't backed by centralized coins because it's not decentralized. So DAI itself might be, like Maker might be a DAO and the voting might be decentralized. So the governance is decentralized and maybe they have decentralized pools, but it's not really decentralized. It's it's backed by USDC. Someone said Jed on Cardano, possibly, but I don't I don't know much I don't know enough about Jed. So I mean, let me let me look it up. Um, I know Ave has one. So Ave has GHO. Curve has Curve USD. Uh, you know, there's there's initiatives coming out, but I don't think all of them are perfect. They all have their inherent flaws, but I do think still Curve USD and and Ave Go are like decent options. Backed by ADA and uses Shen as a reserve coin. Well, if it's backed by ADA, what happens if ADA price fluctuates? I guess it has a reserve coin for minting and burning. I don't I'd have to look more into this mechanism. Obviously, it's clearly like overly collateralized for a reason. But yeah, if Cardano crashes or something happens to the Cardano network, then I guess Jed would depeg. So it may not be a solution, but I, once again, I need to research that slightly more. Someone said Stella XLM. Well, Stella itself is like just a token, but um, yeah, there are stable coins being built there. It's more of a payments type network, but there is still no like true solution. Someone said XUSD. Do I? I don't really know what XUSD is. Uh, 100 Finance, right? On oh, no, a Haven protocol. Well, this is not even a dollar. Hold on, hold on. Is it this? I don't know. The, none of them are a dollar. So if a stablecoin is not even a dollar, then and it's not, then I'm not even interested. They need to be a dollar, but maybe I looked at the wrong ones. USDT DPEGs next, now that everyone's in USDC. Uh, that's almost the opposite, Sam. Everyone's in USDT because everyone's getting out of USDC. So I, it's the complete opposite. In fact, we're, we're likely going to see UST. I agree, USDT can DPEG to the upside. <laughs> if anything, it goes up. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree. It does. It's going to DPEG. It's going to be maybe even a dollar ten. I mean, I'd be lo max longing USDT here. No, I'm just kidding. But like, it seriously is above a dollar. And it actually had, did wick up on some exchanges like a dollar oh five, dollar oh six, dollar oh seven. How will this affect Coinbase stock? Interesting discussion. I think negatively is, is, is my gut feel. Coinbase actually does have, and I need to look into their uh, documents, but off the top of my head, they have like a multi-billion dollar fund on their balance sheet, which is reserved for like USDC maintenance or USDC um, something like that. Like in order to like, like a backstop, right? In like a worst case scenario, Coinbase has funds allocated for this. So if they have to use those funds, then I mean that naturally harms Coinbase's valuation because it's worth less. It's got less on its balance sheet. But I, I would need to check whether that's 100% true. So don't quote me on that, but that would that's what I'm thinking. There is a mod in the chat. We we do have one mod, but I don't know. Um, some people say some stupid stuff, that's for sure. <laughs> and I didn't even see what it was. I just saw someone got blocked. So um, I don't know what they said. I probably don't even need to know. USDT to $2. Yeah, max long USDT for sure. Um, now nah, we're actually seeing a lot of big whales. If you go into look on chain, I wonder if they're updating us, but we're seeing a lot of big whales swap 
USDT for US USDC for USDT. Yeah, look at whoa, that's crazy. A hundred million USDC would just exchange for Dai. I, I don't think this is a terrible trade if you if you want to go one to one USDC for Dai because Dai is trading at less than USDC in terms of its value, but it's not a hundred percent backed by USDC. So I don't because it's largely Ethereum backed. So I think that's a decent trade. Uh, just from a pure like RR perspective. And that's probably why if you long anything, you long die over USDC. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. See, the problem is like um, causing like a lot of... Wow, this guy lost $2 million in one transaction. Yeah, the the curve pools are have a fair bit of stability now. At the same time, a whale borrowed... Hold on. Samsung is buying USDC for an ARB. He deposited staked ETH and ETH into Aave, borrowed USDT to buy USDC. So far has exchanged 28.5 mil for 29 mil, over 1.3 in profit once it's back to peg. Wow. That's crazy. At the same time, the whale borrowed 80 mil USDC from Aave and converted USDC into DAI. If USDC goes to zero and DAI returns to peg, it'll be a huge profit. Wow, so he's betting on it returning. There's a lot of big whales making big moves here. A lot of big whales making big moves. Um, let's see if there's any other big moves being made. See how people are trading this in general. It's super interesting. Circle has burnt 2.3 bill USDC. Probably because, yeah, there's been 2 billion in, in redemptions. Like we saw a lot was probably because, yeah, Coinbase deposited and a few other Justin, uh, Jump Trading, not Justin Sun, Jump Trading, Falcon X, and another institution deposited as well. How am I supposed to sleep when the USDC, USD chart looks like this? Literally, like if you're an American right now, man, I, good luck sleeping. It's still 5 p.m. here, so I still have some chance of, of sleeping tonight, but man, it's crazy. I don't know. Even I'm looking at a bit, even I'm looking a bit shaky from, from a sleep perspective. Oh no, USDC might be in trouble. Let me redeem my $5. Yes, USDC is in trouble, but it's not going to zero like UST. Circle's already car clarified how much cash they have stuck. Situation might be better than what the market's pricing in right now. The worst has already happened, fingers crossed. We know now that 8.2% stuck in the Silicon Valley Bank, but it doesn't mean the money's gone. As Adam pointed out, in a similar recovery process, we can expect a 94% payout. Oh, well, if it is a 94% payout, then like hardly any of their funds are materially affected and they can easily cover. But anyway, that's just, yeah, like one opinion. Tree of Alpha, really respect his content. Six years of relentless tether FUD later, UST went to zero. BUSD got attacked by governments and cannot be minted anymore. USDC trades at 94 cents after funds getting stuck. Meanwhile, USDT trades at $1. Another splendid case of investor protection. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm retweeting that. It's great. USDC fears rampant, uses a fling to safety. Not all of them are going to make it in one piece. Yeah, one guy paid a crazy amount um, due to market slippage. There's a lot. Yeah, it's easy to get wrecked on DeFi now. So, like, I think using an ag like KyberSwap would be good because it will aggregate for you. But if you're not, then just be careful that, that your slippage um, ratio isn't super high. Circles USDC reserve funds managed by BlackRock. Quick stats, 32 bill USD. Liquid assets, 100 allocation, 100% treasury debts, 30-day yield, 4.47%. 40% of these treasuries are redeemable within a week. So if that is true, 40% redeemable within a week, 32 bill, then like you could, you could say like 10 to 15 bill will be accessible on hand within the next week for redemptions. People panicking for no reason. Leia inst instilling fear. I actually did a tweet and then I deleted it at the start of this saga because the wording wasn't great. But that's one thing I didn't really want to do, like instill fear. Um, 
with my tweets. So I like we, that's why I said I was going live because I just prefer to just talk to you guys here, um, explain the situation properly instead of like trying to be too like crazy fearful on Twitter. Um, obviously the thumbnails bearish because I mean this is generally not a good thing for the market. It's a net negative, but um, that's just the YouTube game, right? So I think that's it for me for now, just because if there is another big update, I'll I'll come on later and I'll I'll talk to you guys. And and yeah, and I think pretty I think Rand there's a large chance he does a spaces or a stream as well. So I'll probably come on tomorrow. I've got a video planned for tomorrow, but I'll I'll coordinate with him and yeah, I'll probably come on tomorrow and update you if there's anything else. But I think for now we're good. Someone says where the I, I assume you mean where's Ran? Ran, I just messaged him to come, but he it is a Saturday morning for him and he needs to research before he goes live. Um, because obviously I got the benefit of waking up a lot earlier because I'm in Australia, right? So I had the the morning to look at this. I was actually at the gym, as I said earlier, scrolling through and it was crazy, everything going down. So just like before we leave, if I, I mentioned a few products today, if you do want to use like any of them, um, like obviously NordVPN to protect yourself. Like if you want to do some trade on Bybit or BitGet, we've got nice bonuses there as well as OKX. So links in the description for all the links uh, to everything I mentioned today. I'll keep you guys updated in tomorrow's uh, show or potentially on tweets throughout the day, depending on if anything else breaks. But for now, I think you're fully updated on what's happening. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Um, and until then, stay safe out there. We are seeing USDC now significantly lower on Bybit. So it's just tempting me to long. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got some decisions to make on the personal trading front after this show, that's for sure. But um, I'm going to need to decide that afterwards, not live on camera. I'm leaning towards laddering into some sort of longs because I'm a degen, but that's like, yeah, smaller money than my USDC in initial position. Like pretty small money, right? Not not huge. My trading portfolio is like sub 10% of my spot portfolio just to give you guys size perspective. So yeah, anyway, that's something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to weigh up now. But yeah, until the next one, I'll see you later. Try to have a lovely day or try to get some sleep if, if you're in the US, but I, I, it's pretty difficult, especially if you're in, um, if you're max. I just saw Bitcoin USDC is at 22K, but obviously that's because USDC is going down. It's actually 20.482 on, in, USDT, in USDT. Yeah, if you can get some sleep, get some sleep. If not, um, I don't know what to tell you. Have fun DJing, I guess. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.